she's headed Alabama bound. Lord, she's Alabama bound. Lord, Alabama bound. Tell by the way that she's headed Alabama bound. had some good questions come in. Um, Jane, Anton, and Patrick have all three of them been after me for some time to explain just how I make the, the walnut die that I use on my homemade banjos like this. Well, you can't hardly see it, but there's one back here that, well, both of these back here that you can't hardly see hanging up, but I use that walnut stain on those. So real quick, you know, right now it's uh, it's walnut season. And if you're like me, you've got a bunch of black walnuts growing all around you, native black walnut trees. And right about now, they're dropping these big fat walnuts. Looks something like this, big bright green things, starting to get some dark spots on them. I hope that you guys can see these okay. But nothing to it inside of here is a, is a hard little dark black walnut. Similar to an English walnut, but they taste a lot different and they're a lot more difficult to process. But so all you gotta do, y'all, when, when these start dropping, you don't need very many of them. Just get a little bucket full. A five gallon bucket will work great if you, if you wanna get that many. So get a bucket full and what I like to do is lay them out somewhere in the sun or wherever on the porch or something flat so they're just one layer of them or whatever or you can dump them in a big heap if you want to do a lot but so just lay them out in the sun or something and let these basically kind of rot down and until the, this is a, a soft ish green flesh that's on these so let that green flesh rot down until it turns black and once that happens um, you can husk them once it, once it gets dark, actually I'm already getting there to where you see how I can kind of, I can almost peel that off, but it's really too tough. So wait till it softens up and just start turning brown and you can, you can husk them real easy by hand. And if you want to save the nuts to eat, they're real good to eat. Just go, you know, rinse them off and let them cure for a long time, months or until, you know, they're good to eat. You can eat them right away, but they taste better if you let them cure. But anyhow, take that meat and put that back in your bucket. And what I do is just leave that sit out and let it in the rain one time. Let it fill up with rain one good time. I mean, otherwise, you can just waste tap water on it, whatever. Fill that bucket up with water and then leave it somewhere covered up so where no more water gets in there and dilutes it. And you'll see right away it turns into this black ink, basically. So, but let them sit for a long time, as long as you can stand. And uh, once that water turns completely black and it's sat there for a good long while, all you need to do at that point is strain the, the, the black husks out of there, throw them out in the yard or whatever. And then you're left with this sort of uncondensed black water. Then you take that, that black water and put that on the stove or over the campfire and simmer that off, boil it down for a long time long time do it multiple times um, if you if you have a campfire going or something or you don't mind burning up your stove leave it sit all day like boil it down you'll see till it evaporates a good deal so once you've boiled it as much as you can stand I mean the longer you boil it the darker it's gonna get okay so I basically just boil it and get as much water of it as I can maybe for one whole day and then I'm left over with a good dark stain. You can use that to dye leather, you can use that to, like I do, to stain wood, woodworking projects like banjos. Um, people even really get it down condensed and they use it for calligraphy ink or watercolor painting. So anyhow, that's real easy to do guys and if you if you want me to go through any more of that or maybe share some pictures of the process, let me know. So let's try to move on to another one. Timothy asks, what kind of strings do you use? They are so much more mellow than most banjo strings I have ever used. Well, Tim, 
um, uh, you may be referring to this banjo over here or one behind me that I make and I use um, just the cheapest nylon strings I can find. I've discussed this in other videos. I don't use gut strings anymore um, just be mostly because they're too expensive and and uh, you know whatever. But basically they're, they're hard to come by, they're expensive and if you get a bad pack like you sometimes do then you just wasted all your money on these strings. A good set of gut strings should last you at least a solid year I think. Um, but most gut strings that I've bought in the past few years or whatever, when I quit buying them, they fell apart on me real quick and I paid too much money for them. So I just use the cheapest nylon strings I can find. Medium gauge, whatever. Um, and then on this banjo that you're hearing, this is steel, medium gauge steel strings. I like the phosphor bronze. I can sort of tell they do sound a little mellower, but again, the cheapest metal strings I can find, medium gauge, is what goes on here. So, well, the reason that my stuff sounds mellow is you're either hearing the nylon strings or you're just hearing the fact that I down tune. I'm in double C right now, and my two C strings are actually tuned all the way down to B flat. So, that might be what you're hearing, and that leads into our next question here from Michael. And Michael says, I love the sound of your low tuned banjos. Is there a loss in volume or, tune or tone when you tune down? just because there's less pressure uh, pushing the bridge down onto the head? Do you have to have an adjustable tailpiece to increase the back ang the brake angle to compensate for the lower string tension? Or do you use heavier strings? So Michael, I just answered some of your question. Um, I don't use heavy gauge strings. I actually never have bought a set of heavy gauge strings. I've used light gauge in the past and I don't really like light gauge. Um, it's okay. But I prefer medium gauge strings, and I, you know, you, I, there probably is going to be some slight loss in volume, and I don't know if I would describe it as a loss in tone. I think the tone is probably better, so I would say it improves the tone because I think when the when the strings are slightly down tuned and looser, they're I think they're they're moving more, they're vibrating more, and to me that gives it a, a, a depth of sound that you don't get when they're higher up. I also find it much easier to play the banjo when it's tuned down to say F rather than say standard G or yeah or God forbid up an A. I like I like the slightly looser strings. I actually had my banjo I did a lesson for a gal who had her banjo tuned all the way up to G, so I tuned up to G to match her. And I noticed um, after the fact when I picked it up again, I, I felt like, man, what's wrong with this banjo? These strings are awful stiff. So I realized I had it tuned all the way up to standard G. As for the adjustable tailpiece on this banjo, this is my, my main performance banjo that I'll use on stage or if I was going to go busk. It's the loudest. And you'll see I have one of these handy adjustable tailpieces. These are great. I don't like the way they look, but yeah, I have it jacked way down to get lots of what you uh, refer to as brake angle behind the bridge. I like lots of pressure behind the bridge there. I would do that on any banjo if I could just because I do think it makes the banjo sound better. Um, you know, I mean, all my other banjos that I make they don't have adjustable tail pieces because it's just a hand whittled little tail piece. And on my other nylon string Luscom I use the original antique uh, no knot on that sucker so it's not adjustable. Um, so yeah, there you go, Michael. And we've got time for one more question. Our young friend Ned wrote in. I was real pleased to see this question from Ned. Ned says, you are one of the reasons that I got into banjo and playing music in general. Glad to hear it, Ned. Uh, Ned says he's 14 and he lives in Michigan, where there's not anyone giving lessons. So I have learned a lot from you. I was wondering how you got into the banjo. Well, Ned, that's, I, I'm, of course, pleased that, uh, you know, it's thrilling that anybody gets into the banjo for me, and I guess I'm a little bit ageist because I get pretty excited when a, when a, a, a younger kid like, like yourself um, gets into the banjo, maybe because I encouraged him or made it look cool or something. So that's great that you're 14 and you're already getting started. That's about the age that I started, 13 or 14. And like you, there was nobody around to teach me. So I kind of had to uh, struggle with that at first, and I kind of hit roadblocks until, uh, you know, through my mother, actually, I found a couple people to teach me. And I was fortunate that I lived down in Florida, and uh, 
and living maybe two hours from me in one direction was Ernie Williams, great banjo picker and singer from Sand Mountain, Alabama, who's actually, um, he was a, he was a college professor in those days. Um, so my mother drug me out to Ernie's place. I couldn't drive yet. I was, I was your age or younger. And so she drove me to Ernie's place a few times and he, he basically taught me how to play. And then also through my mother, she found out about George Gibson. George Gibson is a great banjo picker and singer, um, historian. He's actually got an article in this great book, Banjo Roots and Branches, which this, this might be a little bit above your pay grade, Ned, but maybe in the next few years you can think about reading this. It's a, it's a pretty complex book. But um, anyhow, um, so I learned from, from George Gibson. George is from, from uh, Knott County, Kentucky. Um, so that's really how I got into it, Ned. I mean, the first time I ever heard a banjo was late at night on an AM radio station. It was a bluegrass show. And I listened to that bluegrass band for the first time on the radio. And, uh, and I was blown away by it. And the one instrument that jumped out to me was the banjo. I just had to learn how to play it. So there's the answer to your question, Ned. And, and keep at it, buddy. And it, go ahead and, you know, message me directly or keep commenting and stuff. And uh, I'd be happy to talk to you more, Ned, and help you out. And if you need somebody to teach you, well, contact me. And maybe we can do something on Skype or something. I can't take very many students, but someone as young as you, if you're serious about it, I would bend over backwards to help you, buddy. Uh, okay, guys, that's about all the time I've got now. So thanks for looking, and uh, thanks for all these great questions and your ongoing contributions. I sure do appreciate it, and you'll see me soon.